A former governor of Jigawa State, Suli Lamido, has blamed the growing insecurity, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, on the failure of a regime led by President Muhammad Buhari to fulfill their campaign promises. According to Lamido, Buhari and the APC allegedly lied to raise the hopes of Nigerian youth and to take power from the People's Democratic Party, PDP. He said failure to meet the aspirations of, uh, is a major cause of restiveness in the country. And on the similarities between the terrorists in the Northeast and the bandits in the Northwest, Lamido stated that crime was a crime, no matter the location or those who were involved. To break this down, we have Darlington Orji, former publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party in River State, and Sugbeye Eli, he's a legal practitioner and also a member of the All Progressive Congress in River State. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Governor Sule Lamido is blaming the rising insecurity on, the, on your party's failure to be able to meet its campaign promises, saying that they were all belt on lies. And that's why we're where we are today. Well, uh, with respect to uh, Alaji Sule Lamido, he does not speak true to his character as a former governor to call a political party made of eminent Nigerians, including the president, liars. That is the height of disrespect, but I'm not going to dwell on that. He was governor of a state. And as usual, what we hear is they are not concerned and power to command troops. The president does his job as commander-in-chief. The governors are called to chiefs of officers at states and have the mandate they collect your votes. What do they do with it? So when they see if my governor come on air and, and, and tell people that the APC build this campaign on lies, of course, you should know the character of this man. He was one of the five governors who walked out of the PDP convention, all right, that led to the formation of the APC. Ask him what made him stay back. He was haggling for the presidency. He couldn't get it and stayed back. Now, the issues are simple. Where were we before now, before Buari came on board? Where are we today? Yes, you can say security has been found out from the northeast to the northwest. But the kind of bombings you had up to Abuja, where even the United Nations building was attacked in Abuja, they have it now. That's how it's known. The PDP government went to... Sorry, was, was the United Buja. Nations building bombed every other day? Were people being kidnapped every single day? In yeah, every part have, of the yeah, northern may have, may have, nobody axis has, of the country. Nobody has, nobody has a timetable of security infractions. Well, the well, we, well, we report. We have the numbers. And you, you're the one who started off by trying to, you know, yeah, no, what, what, make what, a comparison of sorts. So let's do yeah, it. What, let's do it. We have count the incidents. It's 36. We're counting incidents. And we're saying that nobody has a timetable for security breaches. Nobody has. But the bottom line, I say, where were we before? Where are we today? How many bombs have gone off in this country? Are we saying that those bombs were going on, there were lies, that we are not being killed, that the Yaya bombing did not happen? So which one is a lie? These are facts that were before us. Now the troops, in terms of investing in, in troops, uh, uh, armament or whatever, are you saying that this government is no far less than what we did in the past? What we had in the past? No. Just now we took delivery of some Tukano jets. Everybody knows how far the investment in these things. And for every Nigerian, at the height of a former governor, to come out and tell the world that uh, APC build that can be the lies, the height of disrespect. And let, I think that's let, like, let, know, Let's look at the. Let's look at the things that he said. Yeah, um, he he talked about the root cause of the security problems in Nigeria. He asked a question, and I'm going to quote him directly: Why are our own children, children who are under 25? taking arms against its own kit and kin, going to villages to harass them, uh, to take over their livestock, burn their houses, and even rape their women. And he asked a question, what is the problem? He said, this cannot be moral decadence alone. And he asked, what has gone wrong? So this is the root of the problems. Let's ask, why are our young people doing this? If they were fully employed, if they were given a hope and a future, would this be happening? Yeah, and, 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 and taking a link from the question, the question we should ask is, what did Sule Lamido do as governor of Jigawa in eight years? Is it saying that those youths, 25-year-olds now, who are harassing us, some of them are from Jigawa State, how many of them did they send to school? How many did they deploy? We, we kind of blamed today for everything that happened today. What about, happened, what about what happened yesterday? 
Today is built on the foundation of yesterday. What did he do in his time as governor to employ those people or to send them to school? Two, people like Sunil Amido and Sheikh. I'm saying that security agencies should invite characters like, like Sunil Amido, characters like Sheikh Gumi, that are climbing in Kaduna. They seem to know so much about what's happening in this security in Mayor. Just this week that passed, we had the situation where a military commander in Zafara State had to devise a missile trap. Soldiers within their ranks who are giving information to his three subjects. Three subjects, all right? Who had information was still tracking it. So for those who took the know so much, I think I should blame the intelligence agency. They should go after these men and track them. I will get to the root of this matter. Okay, that interesting. So interesting. So so that it's not just I'm gonna play the devil's advocate until we have our second guest join us. Um since you're pointing to Governor Lamido as to what he's done for his state, let's look at the states that have the most kidnappings, the most insurgents, the most of all of the banditry. Let's look at Kaduna, which is somewhat of a playing field, or has become a playing field for these bandits, where every single day there's one hit or the other. He's an APC, and, and let's not forget the operating word here was the APC's campaign lies. So obviously, every state that has an APC governor, including the federal government, falls in this category. Uh, governor El Rufai is of the APC. Um, and, and let's look at other states like Benue. Let's look at other states like um, um, Zamfara. Let's look at all of those states. Those states have more kidnappings I'm sure the percentage of kidnappings and banditry in those states are less than that of Jigawa. But we're not giving the governor of Jigawa a pass because, of course, if he's pointing fingers at other governors, then he also has a role to play. So if you're saying that the governor of Jigawa state did not do anything for the youths in his state, and that's why there's insecurity also, or maybe some people from his state are engaging in insecurity, does that also mean that the governors of all these other states where the APC is in charge, especially for Kaduna state, has not done anything? You're, you're wrong. Miriam, you're wrong. No, no, no. I just I asked said, a question. I did not, no, I said, I did not I said, notice. I, said, I did not I said, say I said, this is you? the fact. I was asking a question tying yeah. to something that you said. Recently, yeah. the Kaduna State government did launch a program for people to come and invest in Kaduna State. And a few days later, people were kidnapped and a person was killed on Sunday. So if you're making that a session to Jigawa State Governor, does that same accession go oh for God, the God. governors of APC in the states where these banditry and kidnapping or insurgents is growing? Mayor, I don't want to limit this argument to making some states blue states or state red states like in America. We don't have APC police, we don't have PDB police. I'm simply saying that governors But, but you states, made it about the governor because he made a statement. Why can't no, we look at the root causes he's of he's the problem governor. Instead he's of pointing fingers. No, he's a former governor. I said yesterday when he was governor, what did he do? Take from his statement to bring down the level of unemployment and lack of education in this part of the country, in Jigawa State. Well, I said the today we have today is, a, is, is an offshoot of the yesterday that is gone when he was governor. As I mentioned, made that reference, I was simply responding to his own statement. And I'm saying, and I'm saying up to now that. The president does his bit. Security is a whole chain. It's a whole value chain, the whole process. The president does his bit. What did the governors do? What do local government do? They collect security votes. What did they do in the states? That was when the river said, yeah, there was so much of security, you are here, he knew it. But the governor had managed to tackle it to a large extent. You cannot say it's completely zero, no. But this is happening once in a while. The security agency is working in harmony with the authorities and the executive government. Support this, the security system and get this. This is done. Well, they also also work with intelligence gathering. The local police, the local governments, and, and the state governments don't have access to the intelligence gathering apart from using local vigilantes. But whatever it is, so I'm saying that it should be a collaborative effort. Time to play politics with security is over. We cannot say APC states and PDB states. It's got nothing to do with security here. This is America where you can say this is a blue state, a red state. No. Okay. Are we talking about the as, remember, Otto got elected as, a, as an APC governor, and I moved about to PDP. So I'm not saying that suddenly the state switched from being APC to PDP. No. But if I remember, I the PDP to... did not campaign that it was going to put an end to insecurity and Boko Haram in less than a few months. The PDP did not campaign saying that they will bring employment to youth. 
The PDP did not campaign that they were going to put an end to corruption. It was the APC. Now, if governor, former Governor Lamido is making this assertion saying that the APC um, told us, sold us lies, and the reason why we're having insecurity is as a result of the fact that they were not truthful to the people and they sold us lies, can we really take it away from leadership? Because he said, and I quote, he said that this is about leadership and that there is no leadership of sorts from the federal government. This is why we're having this insecurity. But please just hold that thought. We're, be, we're being joined now by um, Darlington. Um, Darlington, thank you very much for joining us. Right. So thank you for giving me the privilege to join you. So, um, speaking uh, on the issue of insecurity and uh, former Governor Lamido saying that the reason why we're facing insecurity in the country is a product of President Buhari's government um, building on lies, or rather selling lies to Nigerians through their campaign. Uh, does that in any way absolve the governors of the PDP in states where these, these um, insecurities are happening? Well, thank you for giving me the privilege to speak to you. For me, in as much as I accept that uh, security is the theme of everybody, I agree that uh, when the president was taking an oath, he swore to an oath to protect the lives and properties of Nigerian people. And when a political party is built on lies and propaganda, the resultant effect is what, where we are. A political party that came on board and said they're going to fight insecurity. That was the cardinal point of their campaign. They talked about the fight against Boko Haram. Today, as far as we are concerned, Boko Haram has rampaged in Nigeria. Today, public schools in the north are being overtaken and overrun by a sudden. So, what are we talking about? The truth of the matter is that Lamita is right. They say that the insecurity we are having is, you know, upon the lies and propaganda that brought in the president of Nigeria today, President Mohammed Buhari. So for us, we cannot wait. 2023 is by the corner. We are going to live with it. When you make a mistake as a person, you live with it and wait for another day. Yeah, you have a chance of making corrections. This government, as far as I'm concerned, has stayed in total, not only in security aspects, in all the promises they made to Nigerian people. Let them say one that they, they, uh, they uh, you know, campaigned on and they kept to our list. So for me, uh, we, we are living with the pain. We don't have a chance, no matter what we are going to say now, nothing will change until January 2023 comes very closer. Well, um, let me go back to what Governor Lamido said, because you see all of this boils down to leadership. And when we say leadership, we can't just leave it at the feet of the president or the presidency. It, it obviously spans through governors, um, legislators, councillors, and local government chairmen. Now, back to what... Governor, former Governor Lamido said, and I'd like to quote him, the issue is that the government must be held accountable, he said. And I don't want to sound too political. Uh, it is a matter of life. Uh, attaining political power, the process must be very credible. It must be very transparent. A leader must be able to say, I want to be in government because I will do this and that. When you ignore this and begin to tell lies and malign and blackmail others, uh, he's, he's trying to say that, the governments have lost their way. It's become more political in handling the issue of insecurity other than looking at the lives of people that are being lost. And this, is, this goes to you too, Sube. We have now reduced the casualties to numbers. Every single day, there is either there's an abduction or somebody's killed. Um, uh, uh, the NDA was attacked recently. Um, I mean, schools have been attacked over and over again. Ch people have had to withdraw their children because they're not, the schools are no longer safe. This still goes back to the issue of leadership. And just as Mr. Lamido has said, he doesn't want to be too political. But if you, as a leader, has taken a note and you have said that you're going to do this and that, when you do not do it and you're criticized, you start blackmailing and maligning, he says that this is where the problem lies. And back to the issue of the APC. This government has been has been promising us for years. This government has a few more years can to I, go. Can I come in, can I come Just in, hold on, let me answer. land. Nigerians are still asking, where is the security that you promised us? Where is no. the economy that you promised us? Where is the anti-corruption fight that you promised us? The president has a, two more years to go. 
Can we point, can we actually, can you as a member of the APC hit your hand on your chest and say that the president has lived up to its expectation? Miriam, on the economy, on the economy, everybody knows the results are there. We're doing far better. We're not raising the economy with exchange rates. We're building infrastructure that are not there in PDP. We're not there. The way really? the PDP began, we're continuing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have not derailed at one point. On security, when they say we build a cabin of lives, did Chico, Chico Gesso happen? Did the air bombing not happen? Did the Boko Haram insurgents not chase away Nigeria from so many areas in the northeast? Is that the situation today? No. Did we find, not find a jet flying from Nigeria to South Africa in the name of going to buy arms out? We are taking money out. It didn't happen under the PDP. They're talking about campaign promises. Have you seen the PDP campaign promise in 1999 when the military was retreating? Would you say the PDP met the promises at even 60% or even 30%? The government will come and go. These challenges arise. I'm even thinking that in the name of politics, PDP can do anything, including running some of these security issues to just gain some ground. Believe me, the APC did that. APC not do it. APC probably in some areas, let's concede. Maybe we either underrated the problem or we overestimated the capacities that we brought on board sometimes. But bottom line, these problems are there. And this government, we're not living in denial. When that shit happened, the government went out by the system. He today, whenever they are sending bridge, the government goes after it. In the case of PDP, they will be denied. Okay, that is it. That people are saying, Chibok has happened that people are saying a piece of sponsoring people to blackmail the government. Did Chibok not happen? Did All right, let, not happen? let's, let's have Darlington chime in on this well, one. Darlington. The general was, the general was already going clear. Wasn't that bumped? Let, let's have Darlington right. chime in. Let's have Di Darlington come in on this one. Darlington, would you like to respond? Well, for me, the, the truth of the matter is that, like I said at the issue, that security is a thing on everybody. But I, the common question to ask today is that we actually have presidents or presidents, because the, all we hear today is that presidency, presidency. And that cannot be run by a presidency. Rather, we should be run by and governed by a president who made promises to the people. For me, governance is a social contract. Once you fail from the promises you have made to your people, it is completely zero. Every student will mark himself or herself after examination. There is nothing like the lecturer doesn't like my face. That was why I failed. If you give out what was given to you at the classroom, they make promises that they are going to better the life of Nigerian people. They make promises they are going to return fuel to 41 Naira. They make promises when they make rice at the cost of 7,800 that they will either maintain or reduce the price. Today, what are the causes of all these uh, products? The truth of the matter is that there is no... There is no coordination in the governance of APC today. So we will live with this. Me, I have decided not to complain again. And Nigeria is supposed to learn how to play it. Why wouldn't Why you would complain? Like You're the opposition. You're supposed to play. That we are going to do that. It's going to change Darlington, our what, what do you mean by you're not going, we're, we're going to live with it? We're not going to complain. You're the opposition. You're supposed to play your position. Why, what do you mean by you can't, you can't complain anymore? Um, of course, the, no, Nigeria is not is a one-party state, state, isn't it? We are going to live with it. It is our fortune. We accepted it as the issue. When they were telling us like, and like, the was saying, this is a combination of people that are angry. They came together from different backgrounds. There is no blueprint. There is no manifesto. And today, that's why I cannot point out on what the people have applied. They said they are going to fight anti-corruption. They are going to fight crime and criminality. Today, Adam Bessemone, when he was the uh, chairman of ABC, it is clear that once you join ABC, your sins are forgiven. So what are we saying, my All dear right. sister? There is no amount of pressure we are going to put other than praying to God. So, you know, give us life. So that by 2023, all of us will put our PBC card and put out this enemy of Nigeria, enemy of democracy, one that do not believe in the tenets of the rule of law, one that chooses the law to be and the ones not to say. So for me, we will care with this. It has come here and it's going to stay with us in 2023. I really wonder what the voters would right say. At the appropriate time. Um, of course, you're the spokesperson for the PDP in, in River State, or former spokesperson. I'm, I'm wondering what the voters or the people who would want to vote for your party would say when you say this, that uh, would have to leave with it and wait till 2023. So in the interim, we should just fold our hands and, um, and throw in the towel. It's, I, I don't know. 
why would I want to vote for your party if this is the hope that you are offering me? Unfortunately, gentlemen, this is the time that we have. Darlington RG is of the PDP, River State, and Subway Eli is of the APC in River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Time is not on our side. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we return, uh, we will be saying our goodbye. Stay with us. We want to thank you all for being part of the conversation today. Don't forget, Friday we have a special because it's October 1 and we'll be having a one hour, 30 minutes special on Plus Politics where we'll be having the big names come on as we talk about Nigeria's journey to independence. I am Mary Anna Cohn. See you tomorrow. <laughs>